Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be taking a look at Boost Auto Parts towing mirrors for Chevy Colorados and GMC Canyons. So what you see in front of you is the second generation style of towing mirrors. These will fit 2015 through 2020 models. And like I said, these are the second generation style towing mirrors. They're a little more modern looking than the previous generation. Boost offers these mirrors with a myriad of options. They're all gonna look very similar, that second generation style, but you have options to choose from. Options include heated upper and lower sections. Another option is the spotlight that is on the outside edge of each mirror. That is an option that you can either have a low output spotlight or a high output spotlight. Also tied in with that, they are normally just going to be a on off with your cargo light. You can also tie them in with your reverse lights. They will also function as approach lighting if you get that reverse lighting option. Another option is on the front side of the mirrors. The orange reflector there can have several options. One is either just gonna be like a running light and a turn signal. Others can be a switch back. These will have the turn signals in the mirror glass. You can see the little holes for those lights right there. And they are manual folding. The top section of these mirrors is powered. The bottom section is manual. You have several options as far as mirror caps goes. You can have the standard black plastic. You can also have chrome. There's also an option for painted mirror caps, which you will need to paint them. I ended up painting these myself to match the body of my vehicle, which is the red quartz tin coat. I bought the painting kit from touchupdirect.com. They include the primer, the color, and the clear. This is not a painting video, but I just wanted to mention if you're going to paint these yourself, just take your time and do each step correctly. Apply light coats of each of the layers. You'll get better coverage that way and and it'll look nicer in the long run. This was my first venture in painting something body colored, but I think they turned out pretty good. They're not perfect. I had to do some wet sanding and then some compound and polish on these after I was done. But for the first time ever painting something, I think I did a pretty good job. Be sure to visit the Boost Auto Parts website to check out everything they have to offer, not only for Chevy Colorados and GMC Canyons, but other vehicles such as the Silverado and the Sierra, F-150s, etc. Boost Auto Parts also offers the first generation style mirrors for Colorados and Canyons. They also offer a full suite of replacement parts if you are to break something on one of your mirrors. There is some additional wiring to get some of these extra features. They include the wire harnesses, as you see here, along with some fuses for those respective functions. There's also the washers right above that that are for mounting the hardware to the body of the vehicle. Let's dig into the installation of these and see what's involved. First, we need to remove the original mirrors from the truck, and to do that, we need to actually take the entire door panel off the truck. First, you want to make sure that you roll the window down all the way. That way, later on when we're working on the wiring, we make sure that none of the new wiring is in the way of the window glass. The door panel is held on with several screws and some key locations. One of the locations happens to be behind the door release switch, so just using a small flathead screwdriver, you can pry back this little panel piece here to get access to that screw there and just remove them as you go. There are also two screws on the bottom of the door panel. They're both seven millimeter. In the last location there are screws is behind this trim piece right here. This trim piece has like seven clips on it, which is way overkill by GM. Thanks a lot, which makes it kind of hard to remove. Just go slow and use your pry tools. Once you get that trim panel off, there are two more screws behind it right down these two holes. You can then take a large plastic pry tool and work your way all the way around the door panel and remove it from the door. Once you have the door panel loose enough, it's held in along the top. You need to like do a tilting motion and lift the door panel off of the vehicle. Then once you have the door panel free from the actual door, you need to come on the back side and remove the door actuator. There's a tab on the top here, you just squeeze it 
Then you can pull the cable back, twist it, and then lift the ball up out of the actuator. Then there's two connectors here that are for your door controls. You can reach in, grab them with your hand, and they're just a simple plug. The two connectors for the door controls have locking tabs on them, so you'll need to pry back the red locking tab first, and then it's just a simple squeeze tab to remove them from their connectors. Once you have that door panel out of the way, you're gonna disconnect this connector right here for your mirror, which has a locking tab, and remove that. The mounting bolts for this mirror are behind this plastic cover. There's just one little plastic tab right here that needs to be lifted out of the way. Then you can sort of just pull this back and reveal the bolts. Once you have that little tab released, you can pop these off all around and get to the three bolts. The bolts for the mirror are 10 millimeter. Once you have the bolts removed, you can push the wiring through and pull the mirror off. You can then take your new mirror and pass the wiring through this hole in the body. Then line up the studs for the mounting bolts. You can then take the rest of the nuts for the mounting bolts and thread them on and tighten them up. Once I have the mounting bolts all tightened up, I'm going to replace this plastic trim piece around the top of the door. And you just have to make sure it gets clicked in all the way. It's kind of tricky, but once you get it clicked in, you'll feel it go the rest of the way. Next, I'm going to go ahead and plug in this connector for the mirror. Make sure you close the locking tab. This other white connector is for the auxiliary features that you have on your Boost Auto mirrors, which they provide a wiring harness like I showed you before. To get access to inside of the door panel, which we're gonna need in a minute, we need to remove the speaker, which is just held on with one seven millimeter bolt. You may need to use a little bit of a pry tool to get behind and peel it off of the door. There is a little bit of a clip there, I guess. But just remove that speaker and the connector with a locking tab so you can remove it from the door. Just below the connector for the mirror, is a rubber grommet that has some wiring coming in and out of it. So then I'm just gonna go ahead and connect my auxiliary wiring harness. Then I'm gonna poke a hole in this grommet and pass this wiring through. Something I did as an extra, I coated this bare wire with some braided loom just to keep those wires extra protected. Once you have those wires passed through, you can reinsert this grommet into the hole. Then take a zip tie and maybe zip tie up these connectors right here so they're not clanking around. So once we have our wiring harness sticking out of the speaker hole, we need to pass them through this grommet all the way into the cab. And the way we need to do that is by loosening this door stop, which is a 10 millimeter bolt. That'll allow us just to get a little more room in there to work. Once you get that door stop loosened, you get a little more access in here to work. It's still pretty tight, but you can do it. To get this connector off, there is a, a lifting tab right here that you need to lift up out of the way. And then that whole piece comes loose. Now getting these wires through the door grommet is a little tricky. As you can see up in here, that's the connector that we just took off, uh, but this is inside the door panel. There's a little bit of room on the right side of that connector to pass wires through, and then we will have them in the jam of the door. This is that connector actually that I took off on the inside of the door. Probably will make it a little bit easier to pass the wires through by removing this, putting your wires through, and then clipping this back into place. The way this comes off, there's this orange locking tab that needs to be popped up like you see here and then you can depress the two side pieces and then push it through the hole and then it comes loose. So you can see I reattached that connector into the hole and it'll lock right into place. These wires are passing right through that little hole on the side and then they are coming out in the jam right here next to the connector. Next thing we're going to do is pop a hole in the side of this connector here, this rubber grommet, and pass our wiring into this rubber grommet so that we can feed it along into the side of the cab. You can also remove this from the door, uh, from the cab rather, and then have a nice easy way to pass your wires through and then fish them back into the cab.
This is probably one of the more difficult parts of this install is passing the wiring through this grommet into the cab just because the working space is so tight. If you have larger hands, it's going to be difficult. Um, but basically, you just pop the hole into that one grommet, pass the wiring into it, and then push it along the accordion piece of that grommet into the cab. It helps use a metal coat hanger and tape the end of your wires on it, and then you can sort of fish it along the accordion piece and then into the cab. Once you have your wire through the back side of that boot, you're going to pass it through the main hole into the cab. And this is what you'll be left with after you get everything tidied back up. You've got your connector reconnected and the wiring going through into the cab. Reinstalling the door panel is pretty straightforward. There is one tricky part that involves reinstalling the clips that came off here, 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 and here, all along the top of the door. Those usually come off with the door panel, but then before you reinstall the panel, you have to reinstall the clips to these locations. There are five of these clips, so you need to take these clips and seat them right into their slots on the door. And there are five of them. Then there is the piece of window felt that needs to be just pushed down on top of this seam here. So that piece of metal is just gonna go right up in there, and the felt is gonna go towards the window. So just get that pushed in all the way. And you can reinstall the two connectors at the back side of the door. Then you can take the actuator for the door lock, insert the ball into the slot where it needs to go, pull back on the connector just slightly so you can rotate it over and feed the wire through the slot. To reattach the door, you need to first insert this lock into the top of the door here. So pop it out from the little grommet and then feed it into the slot like so. Then you can line up all the tabs along the top of the door panel and pop them into place. And then work your way around the door panel, popping in all of the clips. Then you can take all the seven millimeter screws and reinstall them. Then there are two on the bottom of the door panel. Then there are two here behind the grab handle. I have a little trick. I use a little piece of painter's tape to hold the screw onto the end of the bit while I insert it into the door. Don't forget to reinstall this cover panel here. It just pops into place. Then you also have this cover panel here that goes right here below the grab handle. Repeat this process on the passenger side for the passenger side mirror, and then we will eventually want all the wiring to come right here to the driver side kick panel where we're going to hook it up later. Then, once you have your wires coming through the passenger side door, you need to feed them over to the driver side so that you can connect them all to the connections to the vehicle. Here is the wire that I have coming from the door. I just fed it up on top of this little tray here, all along here, just right there. Then I fed it down and there's a there's a little bit of a tunnel here on the transmission hump that you can feed one end through and get it to the other side. Now that we have both our wires from both sides coming through underneath the driver's side, it helps to remove some of these panels underneath. The main trim panel is held in with two screws on the bottom side and then it's just held in with clips along the edges here. These are the spots where the clips are, so that can just pop off. Be careful of the four-wheel drive connector and the headlight connector. They are embedded in that panel. You need to remove those so you can set the, the panel aside. Then there's this metal panel here that is bolted onto these supports here and here. Just four screws, 10 millimeter, you can remove those. Then you get clear access to these connectors, which is where we're gonna be working next. Now, depending on your options, you're gonna have varying amounts of these little fuses that they provide with the kit. Each fuse will just be one function. For instance, you'll have one for each turn signal, so left turn signal, right turn signal, and then for me, I have the uh, also the low output flood, so those will be tied together into one fuse here. There is also included a little ground lug for the ground wire that you will have to bolt down somewhere. I'll show you where to put that too. But then they also give you these little um, these little vampire taps, which is where you will pull the signal for each of these fuses so that each function on the headlight works. This white wire is going to be for the cargo light, the low output flood. This red wire with the yellow stripe is going to be the turn signal. And then this black wire is the ground. 
So I'm first going to start off by stripping the black wire on both harnesses and we'll be tying those together into the ground lug. The next wire I'm going to do is these white wires. These are the cargo lamps and I will use a single fuse for those lights. And then each of these red and yellow wires, these are the turn signals respectively. So the right one is for the right side, the left is for the left side. Those get their own fuse. Next you have to go and attach these to the corresponding connector on the vehicle. So we're going to start with the left turn signal. The left turn signal runs through the brown BCM connector here. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that one. So for the turn signal on the left side, you're going to use this brown BCM connector. And we're going to go into pin number two, which on my truck, it is a light blue and white wire, this wire right here. So we're going to take this little tap connector. We're going to line up the wire right on there and then close it onto the wire. And if you're having trouble getting it closed, you can use a pair of pliers to crimp it shut. And then we'll take the other side of our fuse and there's a little butt connector there that we can connect. For the right turn signal, you're going to get the black connector from the BCM where we just were, the black connector there. And we're going to take pin number three, which is a green wire with a, it looks like a brown stripe or a violet stripe on it. That's, that's this connector, this wire right here. So we're going to add a tap to this wire. So I've got those two turn signals all put together. And the last connector I'm going to be messing with is this gray connector, which is for the cargo light. On this gray connector, we're going to be going into pin number seven, which is in the second row. And it is a brown and white wire, which should be that wire right there. And then plug it in. So the last thing you want to do is just tidy up your wires zip tie them up underneath so that they're not going to be hanging down interfering with you know your feet when you're driving that's what mine looks like right now so then i'm also going to reinstall this metal panel here with the four bolts and i'm going to use one of those bolts to install this ground and then all that's left is to reconnect this bottom panel there's the two connectors for the four-wheel drive and the headlights and then the rest of the panel just pops in and then there's two screws on the bottom. The last step is to do a function test. So we've got the driver's side working with the turn signal on the front, turn signal on the back's working and then also the cargo lamp is working as well. And we go on to the passenger side, turn signal on the back is working, cargo lamp is working and the turn signal on the front is working. Here's a shot from inside the cab of the mirrors. So there's the driver's side, and there's the passenger side. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'd love it if you subscribed. Stay tuned for more videos. Also, be sure to visit Boost Auto Parts' website. I'll leave a link in the description box below. Big thanks to everyone at Boost Auto Parts for today's video. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Later.